live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Veritas Vision 2017. Brought to you by Veritas. Vegas everybody, this is theCUBE, the leader in tech, live tech coverage. We're covering Veritas Vision 2017 at the RA Hotel. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm here with Stu Miniman. Eric Kessels is here, he's a CTO for Fairbanks, a partner of Veritas's, um, out of the Netherlands, and Carlos Carrero is Senior Principal Product Manager at Veritas, and we're going to talk OpenStack. Gentlemen, yeah. welcome. Thank you. We love Thank this you. topic. I mean, five years ago, Stu, it was the hottest thing on the planet. OpenStack came out. Many people, including John Furrier, called it a Hail Mary <laughs> against the Amazon, um, yeah. which it kind of was. Uh, and now the narrative around OpenStack is, well, it's kind of nobody's really doing it, blah, 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 but there are definitely pockets of interest. The developer community is still you know, passionate about it, and service providers are you know, still glomming onto OpenStack. So Carlos, give us the update from Veritas' perspective. What's your interest in OpenStack and your role at Veritas? Yeah, so the key thing is uh, what Veritas has been doing with OpenStack, and also what Veritas is doing with containers, so a merging product for uh, emerging technologies, and one of the key things is with our partners, Fairbanks, all the things we have been doing to validate the product and to bring the product into market. So for us, Fairbanks is one of the perfect partners because what the value that they bring with us. So they are OpenStack experts, and um, uh, he will go through all the content, you know, what, what they do, but they are really understand about OpenStack. They really identify the issues that customers have with OpenStack and how they collaborate with Veritas to build hyperscale as a product to uh, bring those gaps into a solution and deliver those enterprise class services uh, to customers that. I mean, that it's the ultimate in true, the true private cloud vision, Stu. But Eric, you guys used to be VMware experts, right, right and decided to Move, move beyond VMware to OpenStack. Right. What was that journey like? Take us back to... Yeah, right, so that was about, I think, five years ago. So where we did a lot of uh, VMware implementations. But we, at some stage, uh, we wanted to be a differentiator in the market. So a lot of people knew VMware was more a commodity uh, in the uh, IT. So we started to, to, des uh, to design a blue ocean strategy for our company, and then we went looking in the open source market, which open source initiative was feasible for us to, uh, to move forward with. And uh, we still were knowledgeable about infrastructure, so, uh, so then we ran into OpenStack and we did a technical validation and we looked on uh, what the attention was in the market. So from that stage, we, we transferred completely our company from a being a VMware house uh, to a, a complete open source uh, company. But it took us a while, of course, because it was not like a switch of a couple of months. I think it took us about three years to make that complete transition from being a VMware shop to being a complete open source uh, company. Eric, can you talk to us about your customers? Did they come saying, I want OpenStack? Are they coming saying, you know, I, I need to digitally transform? What's the conversation you're having with them that leads to your solution? And, and, and what are your customers doing right. these days? And so when we decided for OpenStack, we, we, at that stage we already had made a decision that we would move forward for the private cloud decision. So we are not focusing on public cloud initiative for OpenStack, so we, we think that OpenStack was initially built for uh, private cloud environments. So, um, so one thing that we saw is that uh, the, the vendor login for VMware or for, for Microsoft was pretty big and customers didn't like that uh, anymore. And, uh, and the costs uh, were pretty high for the VMA licensing. So then we started talking with those customers and say, okay, hey, there's a, a different kind of way of running your workloads in a different kind of environment. Uh, would you be interested in it if we can cut the cost with 50%, for example? And of course, that's always a good trigger to, to get in contact with our customers. And uh, what we see is that our customers are more like enterprise customers, so not big, service providers, but just companies like uh, a customer that is running a, uh, um, a customer um, a customer site so that they can do a customer, uh, a call center for that. So it's really an, an enterprise-like company. And they just want to have the, for those that they decided to, uh, to, to move to OpenStack because they needed to expand their infrastructure like with 20 nodes. And if they did it with OpenStack, it was one third of the price in doing that. So, 
So more than 50%. Yeah. So, so are these cloud service providers predominantly, or describe the customers? Yeah, the, the, we have one. We have, of course, customers that having uh, that are service providers because they have a. I think they have a huge price pressure on on providing a virtual machines, so they need to cut cost on their infrastructure, and I think OpenStack is. It's really suitable for that because it's flexible, Flexible. it is open, you can incorporate your management systems into uh, OpenStack very fairly easily. So uh, for those companies, OpenStack was a really good choice uh, of doing that. And we have also other kind of customers that are like, uh, we have a pack packaging company, so they, they, they print the packaging for McDonald's for example, and they have uh, developer, uh, de uh, they have the developer departments in their uh, company that they want to have really fast VMs for developing their own software. And if mm -hmm. the if you go by more the traditional route, it takes too long before that all is in place. So they want to have some self-service functionality. And that's also what OpenStack can provide, providing self-service for, for their department so to make it more easy. Yeah. Car Carlos, this morning uh, your CEO Bill Coleman said that the future is software-defined, multi-cloud, and, and hyperscale. Um, you know, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're sitting there. Well, my product is hyperscale. Yeah. Um, so maybe you launched the product hyperscale at the uh, OpenStack show in Boston. We got to talk with you on the cube there. Bring us up to speed as to that product and how it, it fits into really the portfolio of you uh, from Veritas, especially, right. uh, I'm kind of curious, the multi-cloud world as opposed to this is very specifically an on-premises uh, yeah. you know, type, type so offering. So we talk in Boston, uh, Boston we launched the 1.0 version. Last week we launched the 1.1 version. We're going to launch the next one together with Red Hat. Uh, this is one of the key things we're doing uh, together, working with them. And as uh, Bill mentioned, you know, it's multi-cloud and it's so well defined. So as you understand the architecture for hyperscale, for OpenStack, hyperscale for containers, is really pure software. So that means it's the, the hardware of your choice. We don't have any, any locking, as uh, Eric mentioned, is no locking into any specific platform. That's one of the key things. But also the architecture we're building is that it's the perfect thing for your private cloud, because in a multi-cloud environment, you still have to have something in-house, so that's the private cloud. With, with all the data management capabilities that we have with Veritas, we can move the data wherever we want. So typically, and that's the challenge you have with OpenStack, you get a locking, you, you get a, a closed environment, how do you move the data? We, we got things already with NetBackup, where we can just move the data from the data plane, move workloads somewhere else, do the recover and allow customers to just one click and recover that workloads wherever they want. So that's a perfect thing, you know, a 360 data management that we got with, uh, with Veritas. So what do you hear from customers around the function? I mean, obviously we hear about the V-tax. People don't want to pay the VMware tax, but uh, Eric, were you talking about when you started the conversations mm -hmm. with your customers, what if you could save 50%? Yeah. You must have had conversations with customers who said, well, but I like the functionality yeah, of right. VMware. It's, I like vMotion, I like the recovery capabilities, yeah. and the, they're doing a good job of adding capabilities and stuff. So where are we, CTO perspective, in terms of the functionality of OpenStack private clouds versus yeah. sort of where VMware is? Yeah, that's a good question, because the, the, the reason that we, we get in contact for, with, uh, with Veritas for, uh, for, for this kind of functionality is because Customer are start running workloads on their OpenStack environment, and in the beginning they don't worry about backups, they don't uh, worry about quality of service, the and then beginning. they get into production, and then they get problems with performance. They get, hey, I need to have a backup. How do I do that? Oh, we don't have a backup. So this kind of gaps were that were really not a good uh, resolved in OpenStack, and, the, and, the, and these were the gaps that Hyperscale filled in. So then, though, on the functional comparison with VMware, we could took away of those concerns and, and have a real good comparison on a functional level between OpenStack and, so, and VMware. I think uh, it was interesting last week, uh, we was in the OpenStack Benelux days. Uh, I had a keynote uh, presenting Hyperscale and I was talking about quality of service and, and backup data protection really, so focus on that, right? After that we had a, a panel with three customers and the moderator asks uh, the three customers, what is your biggest challenge now you've got up on a stat, what do you need? And uh, the first answer was backup. And the moderator said, well, what do you mean, there is no backup? And the answer for 400 people in the room said, no, you got free serve, but that's a project, and well now we hear from Veritas. So that's the thing is that you need to move those workloads, you need data protection. 
and they saw the demo where with one click, you can re recover your workloads. And the third customer mentioned that it is quality of service. And that's a customer that uh, Eric has been working already. They are already working on installing a hyperscale. And they need quality of service because they have a, a workload and running on the cloud and they have to make sure they get the performance that they need for some critical workloads. And again, it's an unsolved problem that, again, all the work what we did uh, together with Fairbanks, Validate, and what they need they have is, uh, is you know, coming all together now. Yeah. Eric, one of, the, one of the knocks on OpenStack has been I want simplicity and OpenStack. Right. It's got all these pieces, how do I put it together? Oh, it's no. all software, you know, wait, backup, no. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. How, how, how does Fairbanks help? What's, what does what you, you, kind of your stack look like and you know, how much is it you can just roll this out and how much is it? The customers actually, some, some customers like that flexibility. Service providers, oh, I've got my management layer yeah. and things like that. What, what, what's kind of the typical environment and give, give us some of the variables. So we're based on the, of course, the journey that we made and of course there were uh, good projects and bad projects. That's the learning curve that we also needed to do. But uh, we managed to build the best practice for OpenStack. So we now can do an implementation of OpenStack in uh, less than two weeks because we know the components, we know what you should do and what you don't have to do. And um, so we, we have a, a good starting point about an environment where you have 11 nodes uh, in total for, uh, as a good starting point for having a production environment for OpenStack. And then you have, and then with Hyperscale included, you, yeah, then you need to add two data nodes additionally because then yeah, that, that's necessary for the, for the copy that you need to uh, have. But uh, a 10, uh, 11 node configuration is, is from our perspective, a very good starting point yeah. where you start with. But yeah. Different customers, but different sizes, of course. Yeah. Do, do, do you do, do deploy the OpenStack distribution? Does the customer have preference on that? I know Veritas has a couple of options, so. So we, uh, we have a preference for uh, canonical distribution because it's very open. I think the good thing from canonical is that the function set that they provide as an open source product is exactly the same if you want to have that with a managed service from Canonical to it. And um, I think the, the real cool thing about Canonical is that their way of uh, deploying OpenStack, because it's, it's, it, it, it leverages a really consistent way of deploying OpenStack. So for us it's very important that when we deploy OpenStack that, that the result is the same on, on every customer site. And that's what the, the tools from Canonical provide us with. So I want to ask you about what you just said about you could do, do an OpenStack deployment in two weeks. Right. I can hear some cloud guy going, oh, yeah, I'll well. just go to Amazon <laughs> and spin yeah, it up. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, so I wonder if you could address that, and as well, how does that compare, for instance, to a VMware you know, installation of a, of a deployment of a private right. cloud? Those two examples. I think uh, when you look at uh, the private cloud uh, from VMware, I think for the installation it takes about the same time thing. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's all about knowledgeability of the, the partner that's doing the installation. Because that's the journey that we had, so we can do the implementation fast. And, uh, and that they can rely on that environment because, uh, as you know, in OpenStack in the beginning was a little bit doubt about the, if it was production ready or not. Sure. And to take that away, it must be a, a solid implementation and that they can, uh, can rely on that and then they can make sure that that they can put their really uh, uh, important workloads also on top of OpenStack instead of making the decision, yeah, should I run it on that or not? So from your standpoint, it's parity in terms of just deployment ease and yeah. you know, functionality, we could, uh, we could debate that all day long. What about the yeah. public cloud example? How do you respond if somebody says, oh, we'll just spin it up in, in AWS yeah, right. or Azure? Yeah, I think the, the public cloud is still a good thing. Uh, it's not a bad thing to have public cloud because I think in the most companies you have a hybrid cloud environment, so you will have VMware and maybe you have a public cloud and a private cloud in, your, in one company. Um, but it all depends a little, a little bit on the type of workload that you're going to run inside of that environment. So I think there are workloads that you, should, that you can run on, on, on the public cloud. But yeah. Eric, does Fairbanks get involved with how they manage that you know, kind of hybrid or multi-cloud environment? We, we know Carlos wants to jump in with yeah. the Veritas answer, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get the, the question a lot, of course, because we, yeah, we know the infrastructure, how it works, and uh, as you probably know, there are a lot of uh, cloud orchestration products in the market that can do the multi-cloud uh, management. But to be honest, on this, on the, at this moment, there's not one real good product that handle all the clouds uh, correctly and managing all the, the the bits and pieces that you need to have for an infrastructure. So, 
Um, we're still looking on that to find the yeah. one that can do that. Yeah, job. What, what, what's on your wish list? What, what are you looking for from the ecosystem? I think it's really good to, um, to have the, um, that there is no difference anymore about the type of workloads that you can run on different kind of environments so that you, that you, you choose based on functionality what you are going to run on that. Now you see there's a lot of about um, focus on uh, on virtual machines, but actually it, it goes all it goes about the application because that's the on the end that's something what what needs to be run on that environment and having the manageability to manage the application I think that's more important than managing the infrastructure underneath it. How about jumping in with the multi-cloud commentary? Yeah, well, I, I think is that uh, the end is the customer choice and what we do as a company is being able to give them the choice, right, is that we don't care and that's in our uh, DNA really. We did that on the past as Mike Farmer explained today is that we didn't care about the operative systems at the beginning. Now we don't care about uh, if you are using OpenStack and containers and where you want to run those. So that is you know, the way we're building products nowadays with, with Veritas is that um, is your choice. So Great. we don't care about that anymore. All right, Carlos, Eric, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, you're welcome. Okay, keep it right there, buddy. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. We're live from Veritas Vision. Hashtag Vitas Vision. This is theCUBE, right back.